If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, holographist coach, Christine McIver. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining tonight. That's right. You are listening to Inspired Choices on the Inspired Choices Network. My name is Christine McIver. I am the host of this show and have been for uh, ever. <laughs> it's been a few years now, and we keep having more and more shows that want to be talked about. And I have fabulous guests, and tonight I have another fabulous guest who's been with me previously. She's not just my guest, but she's my guest co-host tonight. Say hello, everyone, to Melissa Jelinek. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, Melissa. I'm glad you're here with us tonight. It's been some time since you've been on. Yeah. I don't even remember when I was last on, but it's cool. It's fun to come play on the Inspired (laughs) Choices. It was um, April of 2019. So it's been over a year. year. Wow. How exciting. (laughs) I hope we talked about something naughty on our last episode. We did. We were talking about um, goddesses. The goddess energy. You remember we did the goddess yeah. series after we went right. to New York? Yeah. yeah. Which was, wow. it seems like it was so long ago, and it really wasn't that long ago. It was last January, correct? It was January 2019. One year. Wow, yeah. that's wild. That's cool. <laughs> there is, you know, it seems like it was so long ago, at least for me, it seems like it was so long ago because so much has changed. and In the world. The in the world with me, with you, with everything we're creating. And while the changes are, in my interesting point of view, are really, I think, required to match our desires, to to actually bring forth the desires that we have, um, a lot of the changes are great. Um, A lot of the changes are creating angst, as change always does. Um, but they are creating some interesting um, behaviors and energies with people. That's what I've observed, and that's why I wanted you to come on the show tonight. Awesome. Well, um, there are definitely some interesting energies out there. <laughs> so <that'll be> fun. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, everyone, if you're if this is your first time hearing Melissa here with the Inspired Business Radio Show, Melissa always has such a different perspective and I adore that about you you keep me on my toes I'm always I feel like I'm oftentimes when I'm talking with with you Melissa I feel like I'm often like that dog you know I tilt my head and I'm like ah I never saw it that way and it's it's a gift it's a gift that you have in the world you definitely walk your own path which is um I think it's it it's something that more and more and more of us um, if we choose to walk our true own path, we'll bring more of our own joy to the world. And in doing so, we'll bring um, joy to ourselves and vice versa. Mm, so yeah. I I really like that about you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight... I think I like that about me too. <laughs> good. Do you no, question that no. sometimes? I, uh, sometimes I fight for it or against it, yeah. <laughs> and that's tonight's show. Do do do. We didn't plan that, but that was very well done, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we are talking about fighting for or against, and and it's a question. So so what are you doing? Does it feel like the world is in a big fight to you? What are you fighting for? Are we actually fighting against something or someone? What is all this fighting about? And if you are ready to stop the fighting and create a generative world we can all enjoy, stick around for our conversation tonight. So, Melita, the fighting for or against, what comes up for you when you hear that title, when you think about that? Well, the first thing is I think about my mommy and daddy issues. (laughs) So, Mm. so healed or unhealed, and there's so many things in um, my life growing up I was, 
four when my parents got separated, um, or for the second time that my mom actually left my dad. And uh, there was always a lot of fighting for or fighting against things. So I actually grew up in an environment with a lot of fighting for or against. And whether it was my dad fighting for his point of view or my mom fighting against him, or, you know, whether it was their different values, because they have, they're very different people and they have very different um, beliefs and different values. And it was being caught in the middle. And I think as much as there's fights that go on, people forget about the, the people they get are in the middle. Whether they're the mediators in the middle or the people who accidentally get stuck in the middle, uh, whether oh. they like want to be in the middle or not. So I think there's, there's, um, th we've got these two sides. We've got, uh, with a fight, there's always the two sides, but we often forget the middle. And I think that's, there's some value in looking hmm. at the middle of things as well. I like that. See? Out of the gate, people. We're only five minutes into the show, and she's already brought something completely different to the table. What's in the middle? <laughs> What's in the yeah. middle of the fighting? Oh. I, I like that. Well, you know, I grew up in a family, uh, a, a really large family, and, you know, we we were often fighting. And there was often a lot of yelling and screaming and fighting. Now, to me, at least growing up then, it wasn't a negative for me. It, I didn't have a really huge negative experience with the fighting. It's kind of like, um, you know, oftentimes within your a family unit, you can have fighting, but it's it's kind of the way you dance, if you you know what I mean. Um, there definitely were times, for sure, of what you're you're expressing, where um, you're caught in the middle between something extremely intense. Um, but there was there was fighting, and and I think that there can be quote unquote healthy fighting, which today I would actually call that you know um, just sharing your your different points of view and allowing somebody to choose what they choose, and you know oftentimes I'll just say okay let's so let's just agree to disagree, and you're not right, I'm not wrong, and it's cool, but. That's not what we're dealing with right now. So if you're listening to this, um, it live, it's, you know, you know, it's May 2020. If you're listening to this after the fact, we're in the middle of the pandemic uh, known as COVID-19. And I don't know about you, Melita, but I have been spending less and less time doing a lot of reading on social media. And mm -hmm. Try deeply to not watch a lot of news um, because it's just got this energy of fight. Oh, yeah, there's so much. Everybody's arguing with everybody about everything and everybody's opinion is more right than the other. And there's so many perspectives you could just get bogged down. And, and when we're talking about fighting, I think one thing is like what we what we also need to look at with fighting is what what the purpose of fighting is and and fighting mm. has a fundamental purpose for survival like i learned martial arts in my life and the purpose for martial arts survival you don't go in there because you're thinking you're just gonna you know learn some skill like i went in with the purpose of learning how to survive it wasn't about thrive it was about survive so the irony when you're already putting yourself in a position like learning martial arts like I did was that I was already setting myself up for the thought that I needed to fight, that there was something in the world that was going to harm me, that I needed to fight, that I needed these skills in order to defend myself um, for whatever reason. I didn't set up my universe to be a place that didn't require that. I set up my universe as a place where I required to defend myself and fight. Hmm. It's really interesting. And and do you see today that you could set it, your life up differently or that anyone could totally that they didn't have to be a survival? Yeah. So if we weren't in fight mode, um, as fight mode is really a survival mode, what would be what would we be able to do with like survival mode? So fighting for or against, we've always got this energy that is it's um really consuming. For one, it consumes people's minds and bodies and energy almost completely mm -hmm. to the point where they, like, stop creating. And they're just surviving. Right. right? So there's no creation going right. on. And, you know, Melissa, what I've 
what I'm aware of is that when we are in fighting mode, um, you know, you've got that kind of that stance, right? You've got the one foot behind the other and you're kind of like hip forward. You're bracing yourself for the fight. When you're in that energy of bracing for the fight, you're so your entire body and being is so locked down and intense that you're not at all open, right? Even the body posture, yeah. you're not open to receiving something. You are completely cut off. And when people are in this fight mode, they're not in the energy of curiosity. They're not in the energy of listening at all. And they're certainly not in the energy of, you know, I'm going to bring my ideas to the table and what I'm concerned. You, we can be concerned. We can even be scared. And we can be afraid. But you can also make a choice of I'm afraid and I desire something different. And be open to having a discussion. Be open to hearing, really listening and hearing what someone else is aware of so that we can create something completely different. But we have, when we get to, which, and this is the, the thing that fascinates me and we're seeing it so clearly now is when we get into this space of fear we, and we get into that energy of I've got to survive, we cut off the awareness that we have and we cut off the awareness that other people have because we believe that none of this, I mean, I'm seeing this with the majority of people, mm-hmm. that none of this other, you know, the other tools or the woo-woo about having an open discussion actually matters. We can't, we don't have time for that fuss. We got to get down yeah. to it. We got to survive, right? And you know what? Yeah. The, the The picture that I get on my mind is, and I know there's a lot of there's a lot of countries, a lot of uh, top scientists who are working diligently to discover what this is and and what we can do to change this for for ourselves and and so on. And I just get this vision, Melita, of scientists from all over the world coming together. And I can't imagine that the majority of them would be like, "My information is better than your information. I don't want to have anything to do with your information." Right, I, I, but they are doing that. That is what they're doing. Are they yeah. really? Yeah, we have virologists who are fighting against um, other people who, you know, you've got doctors in the U.S. who are not trained uh, or specializing in uh, as virologists, like or or people who are immunologists, and they don't have a specialization in that. You've got doctors who have a, a regular doctor's degree, and they're they're fighting people who have uh, like uh, specializations in these fields. So the virologists and the immunologists out there are saying the reality is, is that in order to build your immune system, you need to have exposure to germs. And the rest of the universe is saying you need to hide yourself and you need to get in fear mode and you need to make sure that you are uh, constantly making sure that you're, you are decontaminating your home and your body and your face and everything else. But immunologists who have studied immune, like the immune system for years, and these are like people with PhDs uh, multi- multiplied times 10, are all saying the same thing, that what they know about the immune system is we need to actually build our immunity by exposure. Very different opinions and the same, we're talking about the same um, brand of science, right? We're going into medical fields of science and they're arguing within themselves. That's fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, so we're going to take our first break of a show. And when we get back, we're going to really look at, you know, what is it that that is creating this energy and how we can change that energy within ourselves. <coughs> Pardon me, because I know when we change that within ourselves, that's where we can take it out to the world. And we can change it. So, everyone, you are listening to the Inspired Choices Radio Show with my wonderful co-host guest, Melita Jelinek, and myself, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network. Stay tuned. We will be right back after this break. 
Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with Holographist Coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with Holographist Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815 880 8255, Canada 613 800 8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Yes, tonight I have a wonderful guest co-host with me, Melita Jelinek, and we are talking about fighting for or against. Um, Melita, I was thinking about this um, the other day. I was having a conversation, and um, it was actually somebody that's very close and dear to me, and and he was saying, you know, I really want to tell people when I think they're wrong, and and I, I want to show them the evidence of this and the facts and so on and so forth. And he was really, you know, very passionate about it and felt that it was nearly his duty to point this out to someone. And I said, well, you know, unless it's life or death to me, I desire to actually leave um, a conversation where that person actually knows that I care and that I've listened to them. And I don't find it necessary or even crucial to point out that they're wrong about something. And, of course, wrong is my point of view, right? What's your thoughts on that? I, it's it's one of those things, it's so easy to get our backs up against the wall and get ready to fight. It's almost like our survival depends on being right. And, and the truth is, and I think we've talked about this before, is like throughout history, our survival did depend on being right. It, our survival depended on if we ate the correct berries or food or drank the correct water, we would survive. And if we didn't, if we were wrong, we would die. And so I think we've talked about that, or maybe that was just like an energetic conversation I had with you. But there, <laughs> there is like this thing where it's innate in us, right? If you're right, you live. If you're wrong, you die. And I think we haven't really examined how that's not really true anymore so much. It's not a survival. Being right is not a survival tool anymore where it used to be. And so, but some of us are still living in that for sure. Like we just can't get out of it because we're, we're running on instinct and we're running on survival. If we were running in thrival mode, maybe we wouldn't have that same um, desire right. to, to like fight all the time or to put our back against the wall every time somebody had a different take on something um even like when we were talking about earlier before the break and you were saying you didn't you didn't think that um scientists would fight among themselves and i was just saying well from what i've seen that they are but we weren't fighting i was just I mean you, you presented me with what you were aware of and i presented you with what i was aware of and what's going on right now in social media is people will actually engage and almost be like if they could have their hands around each other's necks they would have started an all-out fight and going, oh, yeah, well, I found this article. Oh, yeah, well, I found that article. 
we aren't actually here to fight each other, right? We're here mm-hmm. to like present what we know. And I think what it's come down to is that people so desire not only to be heard or seen or feel like they're right. So if they're right, they live. Again, that's that instinct. If you're right, you live. Um, they need to be so right that they are willing to like create fights for nothing just to feel mm-hmm. like they're living or to feel like they're alive, maybe. Get that adrenaline going. You're alive. Right. So, so yeah, it's interesting. You were talking about someone during your radio show the other night about the the person was actually creating a fight um, mm-hmm. because they were bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like... That's interesting. Um, what's the what's the energy of fighting? I'm I'm curious what the energy of that is. That's funny. I was going to ask you that as we were at like commercial break. I'm like, what is that? Like, what is the energy of even like in ourselves when when we choose to engage in a fight? Um, what what is what is it that like comes up in our bodies? And and as a curiosity, that's my question to everybody listening is like. For you guys too, when you can, sometimes you can feel something rising in you, right? And like you can feel your blood boiling and you you know that you're about to uh, lose your shit on somebody. You like, mm-hmm. you feel it coming, right? Like you, there's no denying. It doesn't usually hit you out of nowhere. There's usually a buildup. So what is it that has this desire to have that energy build, build, build? Is it exciting? Does it give us like a sense of relief? Does it make us feel empowered? Um, well, the the it, it definitely is intense, right? It's an intense energy, and I mean, Melita, if you don't if you don't know listeners, Melita has a show called The Pleasure Zone, where she talks about everything about pleasure and sex, and it's it's a fabulous show. Of more information than you could possibly imagine, um, but there the intensity when you think about sex. It, it, the intensity leading up to an orgasm, right? It's very similar. You can you can feel the graduation of intensity, and and For that's sure. exciting, right? So is it that people are so so many people are walking through their lives half asleep and not engaging? They're actually not being present. And what actually wakes them up, first of all, is sexual energy. It it gives them, they're awake for at least a few minutes. But is it that they're looking for more of that energy so that they can wake up? You know, that's, you know, I think that's a lot of that's true. And just to reference one of my favorite shows of all time, shows and series of all time, Star Trek, is like Klingons and I'm going to reference things that maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about, but I'm only going to talk about this for like two minutes because I got to bring Star Trek in. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So you were talking about fighting and sex and actually there's this uh, race of aliens on Star Trek called Klingons and they, when they uh, have sex with each other, they nearly slaughter each other. So the women will jump on the men and fight them and they're almost guaranteed to break ribs and have like broken bones because the intensity of their sex is so much that they they harm each other but they love it it's totally primal yes Rhonda yeah Mm -hmm. so primal (laughs) so so when you were talking about how like it's so that rising energy is so similar uh, that was my first thought was just like the Klingons it's like you well, like fighting in life, it, it's life, right? When like sex is life and orgasms are life-giving energy, just like um, killing somebody can be a life-taking energy. They're just the, the other ends of the spectrum or kind of the same part of the circle, right? So mm-hmm. it's, um, yeah, equally exciting for sure. Equally exciting. I, I don't right. know I uh, went on that sidetrack of Klingons because I had to. <laughs> Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Um, I want to say, tell you the the online etymology um, that I love to go to. The etymology of fight is a fight, combat, or hostile encounter. Mm-hmm. A hostile encounter. So if we are really conscious, we are a conscious being, 
and we're choosing, and anybody that's listening to this show, I would suggest that you are a conscious individual choosing to have more consciousness than you've ever had before. If you are in the energy of fight, you are creating a hostile encounter. Even the idea of the word fight, immediately you can get a vision in your mind, you can get the energy of fight. It's like someone wins and someone loses. Mm-hmm. If if we are in the world of someone wins and someone loses, eventually everybody loses. Eventually, yeah. Eventually we all lose. And, you know, I, I've really been thinking about uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a show, uh, Who Will You Be After the shut, the Lockdown, right? And and I'm really been thinking about who do I want to be? Who do I who do I really want to be in the world? What do I want to leave in the world? What do I want to leave in a conversation? What do I want to to actually have follow me as I choose to leave the planet? Right? Uh, what do I want to leave behind? And I really think that you know that there are a great many of people looking at this and and choosing consciously at who they want to be and what they want to have in the world. And I think that it really is important now more than ever that we slow down and we get, you know, do our friggin' personal development work, like do some checkup from the neck up stuff and, and honest to God, get rid of this shit of fighting and when when we do that, we are, will be creating the world that we say we desire. You know, do you ever find that um, that that a lot of people are just paying lip service to they they desire to have a wonderful world? Uh, uh, way too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's it's a lot of lip like, service being paid. It's like, I want to have a wonderful world, but I'm going to fight you for it. And I'm going to bring shit to the plate. So then I expect what I expect out of me bringing crap to the plate is the world's going to be a happier place. How does that equation even work? I don't even know what math that is, but that doesn't add up. Exactly. Exactly. The math does not add up if you feel like you have to fight. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, you you and I are two women that love math. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. absolutely give us the numbers so, this doesn't add up <laughs> wait a second this shit don't add up exactly what is it that you actually desire to create in the world melissa that will be different after the pandemic has subsided you know it's funny because i don't see it as that much different than what i've been desiring to create for the last maybe five or ten years um I would say six. I, it's, I would say that it, a lot of things changed when I started my radio show and my clarity on what I wanted to create on the planet became more evident to me, where before it was kind of hidden. Um, and now what I'm aware of is I, I, love to, um, I love to offer people and the world a way to like express and, and experience pleasure, whatever that looks like for them with no, uh, no judgment. So as long as everything is, uh, how do we say, um, that there is, everybody has agreed to it, um, then I'm good. Consensual, consensual pleasure. I'm all for that. And that's, I don't think that my target has changed. Like if I look at what would I like to offer the planet after, you know, the lockdown is done, same thing. I would like to mm-hmm. offer ways for people to know that pleasure is possible. Even in times of lockdowns, there are ways that you can still have pleasure in your life. It's um, I don't I don't really have the BC thing going on it before COVID after COVID. It's kind of like the new <laughs> BC going on, and I don't really have that with COVID. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that um, for for a lot of people, and you've been very. You've done your work for many, many years. You've done your internal work, your personal development work. You've really looked at what is important to you. Many of us are still on our path uh, looking at what we we really want to do and what, what's really very, very clear. And that's cool. You don't have to know today. But when you have targets, 
when you actually have targets of what you desire to have, um, that's, that's where I think it makes a big difference. And that's where I think it leads us to the bigger desires that we have. And, you know, this fighting, the fighting that's going on on the planet, um, it's, it's such an intense energy that it knocks people out. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> It's it, it's knocking people out. It's knocking people out of the conversation. It's knocking people out of desire to change what's not working. And it's it's knocking people out of relationship. Like there are more and more people that I know that are going into withdrawal. And I'm not talking about isolation, you know, because of because of the virus. I'm talking about people going into withdrawal. And, yeah. you know, we have come here to this planet friends <laughs> to be with other people on the planet and when we go into withdrawal because we're afraid or we're overwhelmed with that energy of fight it actually impacts our immune system it impacts our joy it impacts our pleasure it impacts our creativity it it literally is the the poison that will kill people in my interesting point of view mm. It's, um, so there's yeah there's different philosophies on that but we can look at that after the break if you want yeah that would be great yeah yeah otherwise we'll just keep going on and on and on <laughs> <laughs> you and I could talk for days that there's no doubt about that yeah. okay my friends we're gonna go for our second break and when we get back we're gonna jump back into this conversation and uh, we're gonna see hmm what else wants to be talked about what else is kind of coming forward so you're listening to Inspired Choices on the Inspired Choices Network with my guest co-host Melissa Jelinek and myself Christine McIver stay tuned we'll be right back Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with holographist coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you ready to have pleasure with your business? Yes, I said pleasure with your business. The pleasure of business a la carte will surprise you with topics like meet yourself in the boardroom, money, services, and you. Expand your visibility. The pleasure of communication. The pleasure of Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Christine McIver has so much pleasure with business and loves teaching all things business. Beginning a new business? Desiring to expand a current business? or looking to resurrect a business that has been dormant. This program will get you fired up and bring more pleasure than you have ever imagined. Exhausted with your excuses for not creating a phenomenal business? Join now for all the pleasure with business. Pleasure of Business a la carte gives you total choice for what you desire and what your business requires. That's 24 weeks of different topics to choose from with weekly calls, audio and video recordings, and PDFs. This class will have you dive right in and use tools to create the business that has been speaking to you. Go to inspiredchoices.ca for full details or join the Facebook page, Pleasure of Business a la carte. Now is the time for you and your business. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with holographist coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. 
All right. Welcome back. So thank you for sticking around. We're talking with Melita Jelinek today, and we're talking about fighting for or against. Now, before we dive back in, Melita, can you give us a, a brief uh, what you do in the world, what you offer, and how people can connect with you, please? For sure. So what I do in the world is a few things. I have a radio show called The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and you'll find it on all the different places that it's podcasted and live streamed on Monday nights at 8 p.m. EST. I also have my own private practice where I do uh, several different types of healing work, uh, some that involve informational healing, so healing using information uh, through, through different instruments, as well as I have different uh, modalities that I've trained in extensively, like body work uh, that is a type of somatic body work I do, as well as different uh, energy work. So I've been studying for uh, 25 years now. Yes, you're that's, amazing. That's my summation. And, <laughs> that's your summation. I like it. And where can they contact you? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So you can get me on my website at uh, www.milicajelenic.com. Awesome. That's and of course, you can find. find her here on. You can find her here on the network. You can find her on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You you get around, don't you? I am a bit slutty that way, yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I work with individuals to bring their voice to, to their world, whether that's through their business, through their personal relationships, through social media, through having a radio show, uh, wherever it is that you want to clarify your desires and really step into having and creating more in your world, uh, that's what I do. And uh, I am the network owner of the Inspired Choices Network, so I talk to people about the possibility of bringing their voice out. So if you're interested in learning more, working with me one-on-one -on -one for your personal, for your business, or for bringing your voice to the world, you can contact me through the inspiredchoicesnetwork.com website, inspiredchoices.ca is my personal website, or you can email me, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca. So... That gives you an idea of what the two of us do. Now, what we also do is we philosophize about a lot of things in the world and we bring our knowing to the world, which I absolutely love these conversations. So, Melissa, before we went to the break, I was talking about how withdrawing, people withdrawing can actually create a, a great deal of Ill, Ill health. Uh, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and so on. And you have a really cool understanding of a way of healing. Can you share that with our listeners? Yes, it's it's not my method, but I'll share um, just the information I have on it. So with, um, w yeah, with some people, withdrawing is actually, like you were saying, becomes like an antisocial behavior, and they're doing it more out of a place of um, fear or something. But there's usually other other things going on where people are choosing to withdraw socially. And when you look at the animal kingdom, animals have a tendency that when they are healing, they will withdraw. They'll, they'll tend to eat less. They'll tend to slow their breathing down. And um, with animals, we don't really know what they're thinking for sure. But um, with humans, we can slow our thoughts down as well. So with animals, their natural instinct is to withdraw and hide to heal. It also puts them in a position where they're not going to be vulnerable to predators. So withdrawing is, is actually a preservation act for, so part of us is, is like our animal instincts could also be that we, some people have the instinct that when they don't feel well, they withdraw. I know that when I don't feel well, I'm a person who needs to be alone and not talk to and like the more you leave me alone the faster I can heal and that's not true for everybody but it's true for me um, if somebody just you know if I'm not feeling well and I'm just delivered water and drinks and ask no questions the less I have to think or breathe or move I can heal pretty fast when I have uh, mm -hmm. all those things in place and there is a, a method and I believe it's from the Vedas which is um, the Vedas are uh, scriptures that are uh, that are affiliated with like the Hindu belief system. And in the mm -hmm. Vedas, I believe it's from the Vedas, which is where you get the word Ayurveda from as well, it's the practice of um, from the Vedas. So, uh, and yes, you can correct me because I'm not an expert in this, but there is a method that is translated loosely in English to the four fastings. 
And the fastings include fasting from food, so eating less, a lot less, so having very little food, having very little movement, so fasting from movement, fasting from your thoughts. So part of the way you can fast from your thoughts is to be aware of them. And we're talking about fighting tonight, right? So if you're aware of your mm-hmm. your thoughts where you want to fight people, and you can start to fast from those, basically it's just choosing not to feed into them. And then uh, fasting from breathing, and there's a lot of different breathing techniques that are out there that are available that can assist with uh, fasting from breathing. Uh, my, one of my favorites is the Wim Hof method. So his name is W I M, last name H O F, and he got a great um, method for being able to learn how to fast from breathing to it actually regenerates your body and it helps your immune system strengthen. So um, great, mm. great uh, method. Um, but a lot of this like withdrawing energy, we instinctively, instinctively, a lot of people will do it like from an animal perspective for survival. Hmm. I, I, you know, now that you bring that up, the the withdrawing to heal is absolutely like I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I have been aware of so many people with deep sadness and depression and suicide that I know that that's one of the things that they do is they withdraw deeply uh, and it's not from a space of healing. So I guess I guess one of the questions could be if you, we find ourselves withdrawing is to really ask, is this about me healing and strengthening or or am I actually running away from something? Am I, am I afraid of something? Am I avoiding something? Am I has the effect of something out there that I believe I don't have choice over? Yeah, great question. Yeah. Right, right. Because we do, we have to check the energy on that. Because I, I mean, I know people that will say, oh, I'm so sick of social media. I hate it. I'm not having it in my world. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if it wasn't that big a deal to you, we wouldn't have such a charge on that. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, <laughs> I I have a relative who freaks out and will go on and on and on talking about how Facebook and all these other social media platforms are there to steal your identity and and you know okay well I, you know how are they stealing it are they you know if you're on Facebook you know do they have your do they have your money do they have your bank account do they you know what are they they do have access actually? to it. But, yeah, they do, they do have access they do have, to it now, but right. But Facebook, at the same Facebook. time, they're also a business who wants to stay in business. Yeah. So and it's, and it's just it's, a choice, right? Like being on social media is just a choice. And if we're aware of it, and we're like, yeah, we, we're aware that they have access to our stuff. What are you going to do? We've I've been on um, Facebook for 13 years. What are you going to do? They've had access to my stuff for 13 years. If I pull out now. Is, are they going to lose access? No, because they already have all the information. It doesn't even matter at this point. Right. But again, it comes down to that energy, right? Like, what's the energy that you're creating with here? Is Are you in the fighting? Are you in the fighting for or against? And And what is that actually? Is it actually creating the the outcome? Right? It's like if you're fighting, if you're going to war to fight, mm-hmm. are you fighting for peace? Like it's no, just, you know, never. I remember the first time I heard that. <laughs> and it's, like I, it, 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 it's so ironic and it really blew my mind. Like I was like, wow. <laughs> I can't even express to you how much that was like. I kind of felt like I was stunned for a little while just, you know, digesting that. And it's really true. Like if we want peace in the world, if we desire for people to be healthy, happy, whole, if we desire to have joy and pleasure, do we really think we get it through creating a fight, a fight within ourselves, a fight with other people? Like, so it's, the, it's, If you're a sadomasochist, yes, yeah, that's pleasurable. <laughs> Right. I guess it depends on your perspective of what you enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, the one of the questions I often ask people, whether I'm coaching them or just having a conversation, is like, what is that choice actually creating for you? 
Like, mm-hmm. is that giving you what you desire? And <laughs> so many times, Melissa, I'll, I'll have people kind of look at me and they'll do the whole dog thing, right? They'll be like, huh? Yeah. It's okay, one so of my favorite angry. questions to be asked or to ask myself. I love that question. Like, is this? actually creating what I would like to desire? Are my choices creating that? You know how many times my choices aren't um, so cute and I'm like, whoo, readjust. Because you can choose exactly. again. That's the beauty. Yeah. That, that's exactly it. Like, do you actually, are you open to looking at your choices? Are you open to it? Or have you decided that the only way to survive living is by fighting? Because mm-hmm. if that's what you've decided, you better put your boxing gloves on. Yeah, it's going to be a long road to hope with that. I'm kind of it's exhausting, just, it, too. It is exhausting. I want to have pleasure and joy and laughter and play in my world. I, mm-hmm. I really don't want to have fight. I, you know, I have fight. I have fought for many years for many things and. And it's created, you know, pain in my body. It's created pain in relationships. It's created a lot of heartache. And it's, and it hasn't created what I say that, you know, when you sit there and you dream, like, oh, if you could have anything, Melissa, what would you like? I'd like to have a fight every day. Okay. <laughs> that turns me on. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our last break of the show. When we come back, we're going to wrap up what we're talking about, maybe give you guys a couple of ideas. So stay tuned, everyone. You are listening to the Inspired Choices Radio Show here on the Inspired Choices Network with my wonderful co-host, Melissa Jelinek, and we're talking about fighting for or against. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with holographist coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Inspired Choices Radio Show with holographist coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, Call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Hey, everyone. Thanks for sticking around tonight and enjoying the conversation with Melissa. I, I've been really enjoying this conversation, Melissa. I love how you do bring a different perspective and how we just kind of throw it all on the on the table and, and look at what actually wants to come forth. So what's the one thing, Melissa, that really resonates for you from our conversation tonight? Well, I think part of it is to a, not make fighting necessarily wrong, but to think about whatever it is that you're fighting for, are you willing to die for it? Because essentially, Mm. if you continue to fight for something, your body will have the kind of stress indicators that will create diseases and different things that will, you know, speed your, speed your uh, death time up, you know? So my, my question to myself personally, before I engage in a fight is, am I willing to die for this? And that just came, you know, from an example when, um, just before I was engaged to my husband and we were having an argument and it's like we've had three arguments in our entire seven years um, <laughs> and and the the first argument was because he couldn't hear me because I didn't understand how deaf he was and he didn't understand what I was saying so <laughs> there you go but I didn't understand how deaf he was and so I took the argument outside and I, I didn't want to fight in front of my daughter and as we were discussing these things and he was saying, it's that I am deaf and I can't hear you. 
I was like, okay, well, what I was saying was something else. And this bear came running out of my woods and like leaping bounds towards us. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is not worth dying for. So anytime I like have this thought, you know, like, you know, sometimes I'm a scrapper and by my nature, I'm, a, I'm very scrappy and I'll fight for a lot of things. My dad always said I should have been a lawyer even when I was a kid because I'd fight on any side, it didn't matter. I'd argue any side just to argue. And I've learned that that's not always productive. And so what I've now is like this energy of this bear bounding at me. I'm like, is this worth the bear situation? 99% mm. of the time or more, it's not. That's so cool. And uh, talk about needing a, a really big <laughs> reason to, to to decide whether it's worth fighting or not. You'll always be able to look yeah. back at that one. <laughs> oh, I do. It's something. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. I love so what, that. What's is your greatest? Worth dying? You know, yeah, so mine what's your greatest is, takeaway? I mean, I, I think the, the whole idea of of what is this creating for me right here, right now? And, and what is this creating? And, you know, to have, to have me be able to look at that and, and to be able to make that choice in the moment. Um, I had a recent incident with um, some family members. I'm not sure if I ever ended up telling you this or not. And I'll tell you, you know how you have those people in your life that they can just, Friggin' well, press a button on you in, a, in about three seconds flat, you're ready to just scream your head off. And I allowed myself to be pulled into this. And I didn't sleep that entire night. And I was, I woke up angry, you know, it affected my body, it affected my next day, it affected my emotions, you know, of course, it affected my immune system. Like, it affected my relationship. I was I was staying in an apartment with somebody at the time. And it probably took me three or four days before I went, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look what I, look what I allowed myself to step into. Mm -hmm. Look what I allowed myself to be impacted by without thinking. So I wasn't being present. I was going back into that old energy of these people drive me insane. And, you know, I just, I just allowed that to be pulled back in. And it's like, hold on a second. And, and this question actually popped up. It's like, okay, Christine, what are you, what are you creating? And it's not mm -hmm. necessarily what am I creating with that person? Right? Because it, it has to start with us. Like, what am I creating for myself? in allowing myself to be angry, to be fighting, to be pulled into this insanity. So for me, that's, that's a really big thing is like, what am I creating? And uh, what is this creating for me? And then of course, you know, you can expand that out. So I think that's a big, big one that I'm going to try to have in my forefront of my mind more and more when I start to engage with intensities with individuals. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. And and I wonder like how many different ways are other people willing to be in the world to if they are, if they do need to fight, are they fighting for their life? And if they are willing to see what that's creating, it's great. I think it's great too. Melissa, thank you so much for being here tonight. I I really love having these conversations with you and I love that even though we are good friends, we can have very different points of view sometimes, and it's all it's all welcome. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, all of the listeners out there. Thank you so much for being here. If you have a topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, if you have some interesting ideas, please share them. You can contact me, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca. Until then, remember, you can always make Thank you for choice. choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life. Making the choices that bring you all that you desire.